The PlayStation 4 has been an amazing console this generation with a ton of great games. But as we head into next generation with the PlayStation 5, I thought it would be fun to take a look back at some of the best games available for the PlayStation 4. So today we're going to take a look at the top 25 best games available on the PlayStation 4 as of 2020. Now do keep in mind that this is only my opinion, and with there being so many great games on the PlayStation 4, you're bound to have a different list than me. And if that is the case, make sure to let me know some of your favorite games as well for the PlayStation 4. With that said though, let's get right into the list. At number 25, I have Rise of the Tomb Raider. Lara Croft is one of the most recognizable mascots for video games dating back to the 90s, and Square Enix did a great job with the Tomb Raider reboots. The best of which is very possibly Rise of the Tomb Raider. It has an engaging story and plot, the world is fun to explore, and the gameplay itself is just phenomenal. Whether that be with the shooting mechanics, the platforming, or even its puzzle elements with things like Hidden Tombs, Rise of the Tomb Raider is an excellent game, and actually I would recommend playing the entire trilogy. Shadow of the Colossus was one of the best games for the PlayStation 2 and PlayStation 3, so funny enough it's also one of the best PlayStation 4 games. The thing is though, Shadow of the Colossus for the PlayStation 4 is probably the best of all three thanks to it being a complete remake with gorgeous visuals. Shadow of the Colossus has always been a very unique game where you take on colossal monsters by climbing these beasts and exposing their weak points, but the graphics in this game is just superb. For me though, there has never been a game quite like Shadow of the Colossus and the way it absorbs you into the world. This is why it's actually one of my favorite games ever made. Street Fighter V didn't exactly have a great launch. It was kind of bare bones with little content, but one thing this generation has shown us is that games can evolve over time. Street Fighter V is a prime example of just that, as they have continuously brought more characters, levels, and content. Now here we are in 2020, and Street Fighter V is arguably the best fighting game on the market with a very competitive fighting game community. Seriously, if you want to get into competitive fighting games, then Street Fighter V is definitely a good game to pick up. Rocket League has been one of the biggest surprises for me this generation. When it first released, I didn't know what to think of this game. It was just a car pushing a ball into a goal, but when I actually played it, I was blown away by just how good it truly is. In fact, it's one of my most played games this generation, and even though anybody can jump in and play Rocket League, there is a very high skill ceiling for this game. Rocket League is a unique and fresh idea, and it's also, in my opinion, the best sports game available right now. It's only fitting that one of the first big franchises for the PlayStation brand not only returns, but it's also among the best games for the PlayStation 4, Crash Insane Trilogy. This is the entire original trilogy with updated graphics, but that same unique feel of Crash Bandicoot. The Crash Insane Trilogy somehow managed to keep that same charm from the 90s with its brutal difficulty, and I think one of the reasons is because of how unique it is. It is a 3D platformer, but plays completely different with different fields of view. This is an insanely fun trilogy and can be very addictive for those looking to get platinum trophies. It still amazes me to this day that Hellblade was developed by a small team of about 20 developers. Hellblade is a game that can easily stand toe to toe with other big AAA games. It looks phenomenal with cutting edge graphics and facial animations. And when you pair those animations with the brilliant acting of the voice actress Melina Jorgens, Hellblade really starts to stand out. I think it has an excellent story that has you think just a little bit deeper about mental issues, and even the gameplay is a lot of fun with its hack and slash combat. It is linear, but I think it's one of the best single player games available for the PlayStation 4. For years, fans have wanted Obsidian to work on a game similar to Fallout. After all, they did an excellent job with Fallout New Vegas, and many believe that New Vegas is actually the best in the entire franchise. Well, fans finally got what they wished for with The Outer Worlds, and they delivered in a big way. This is an excellent first-person shooter RPG with a lot of character. The world building is top-notch with not only humorous characters, but the world itself is just fascinating to explore with them poking fun at corporate culture. 
If anything, Obsidian once again proved why they are considered one of the best RPG developers in the industry. When it comes to story-driven games, I'm not sure you can pick a much better game than Yakuza 0. The story in Yakuza 0 is simply amazing, with plenty of twists and turns that keeps you invested for its entire 30-hour long campaign. And even though this game looks goofy on the surface with its beat-em-up style combat, it is super fun, offers a lot of activities to do through mini games, probably one of the most atmospheric games I've ever played, and the story itself is very serious and will likely make you cry when all is said and done. With that said, all of the dialogue is in Japanese, and that may turn off some players, but I do encourage you to check this one out because it really is that good. For years, I have wanted to see Assassin's Creed go to Japan and do the samurai setting. For whatever reason, they refused to do that, but thankfully Sucker Punch has made an open world samurai game, Ghost of Tsushima. Now first off, I just want to say that this game is absolutely gorgeous. While the facial animations aren't the best, the world is almost unbelievable with how pretty it actually is. A lot of this comes down to vegetation, and you'll be stopping non-stop by how breathtaking it is. It's also a fun game with its combat and even the stealth-based gameplay. It's not perfect, but it is a lot of fun, and I also like how faithful it is to being a samurai. Ghost of Tsushima is the perfect swan song for the PlayStation 4. Monster Hunter has always been big in Japan, but for the first time ever, it has exploded in popularity across the entire world. As of this video, it's actually sold 16 million copies worldwide, and it's well deserved. Capcom has built a beautifully crafted world filled with monsters that actually feels lifelike. Each monster has their own unique behavior, not only interacting with you, but its natural habitat as well. It's this attention to detail that really makes Monster Hunter World stand out, but it doesn't end there either because the gameplay is just as fun with multiple character classes. It is a very addictive game as you hunt these monsters either alone or with friends, and if you're looking for a game to sink a lot of time in, well, Monster Hunter very well could have you putting hundreds of hours into this brilliant game. I've always liked Remedy Entertainment and their games as they do make very unique worlds with good sci-fi stories, and Control is a perfect example of this. The entire game plays out like a Metroidvania in a building that continuously morphs and changes. Truly, it is a beautiful game to watch in motion, though that is the thing. I do recommend playing this game on the PlayStation 4 Pro because the standard consoles being the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 has struggled with this game. With that said, it's a very fun third-person shooter with a lot of abilities that basically makes you feel like a superhero. It may not be as popular as some of the other games on this list, but I do believe it's one of the best games available right now. Resident Evil 2 is the perfect example of how to do a remake. This is a true AAA remake of a classic PlayStation game, and they didn't just simply do a remaster, but rather they took an already good game and took it to the next level. It's now one of the best looking games available with the Resident Evil engine, they added new additions to the game for some new surprises, and the gameplay is both tense but fun at the same time. Even the story is really good in Resident Evil 2, which is probably why so many people view it as one of, if not the very best horror game to ever be made. Now, I do want to give a shout out to Resident Evil 7 and 3 as well. I do think that both of those are great games too, but I think 2 ended up being the best of all three. Nier Automata has been one of the most surprising games for me this generation. It absolutely blew me away in terms of its story, its world, its music, and its gameplay. In fact, I would flat out say that Nier Automata is a masterpiece. You do have to beat the game at least three times or basically play three different timelines to actually reach the end of the game, and it is so worth it. The gameplay is insanely fun with its hack and slash combat, though it always mixes things up with new gameplay mechanics, such as shoot em up sections, and quite honestly, it's actually probably in my top five favorite games this generation. Rainbow Six Siege launched to a bit of a rocky start. Its servers were not great, and it didn't have a ton of content, but there was always a great game there. It just had to hit its stride with a few tweaks and expansions, and once it did, there was no turning back. 
Rainbow Six Siege exploded in popularity for its unique tactical team-based gameplay. You can choose from a plethora of characters that all have their own abilities which can have a huge impact on the game and how you play. The sound effects though are incredible in Rainbow Six Siege. The way you hear other players move around within buildings is something I haven't really heard in other games. The good news here is that Ubisoft doesn't seem to be slowing down when supporting this online game and we may see it for years to come. Insomniac has always been a great developer with games like Ratchet & Clank and Spyro. Spider-Man though may be their best yet. Much like Ratchet & Clank, you do get to take advantage of several insanely fun gadgets and I think that Spider-Man may be the most fun open world game that I've ever played. What I mean by that is that it's actually fun to travel the world thanks to how Spider-Man swings building to building. It also has a very gripping story, and in fact, I personally like the way Spider-Man was portrayed in this game more than any of the Spider-Man movies that I've watched. It also has me excited to play more Spider-Man games for the PlayStation 5. Now, The Last of Us has been very controversial this generation to say the least, but whether you like the first game or the second game, these games are some of the best story-driven games to ever be made. I personally like the first game more, but in a world where not everything is so nice, there is going to be times where the characters make choices that you may or may not agree with. It's even going to make you feel uncomfortable at times, and that is one of the reasons it has become such an impactful game, sparking a lot of different emotions. The gameplay is also very impressive with some of the best animations you're going to see in any game. Naughty Dog clearly showed that they're some of the best developers in the industry with part two, and it'll be very interesting to see what they decide to do next. By many fans, Persona 5 is considered one of the best JRPGs ever, and quite simply, that's true. It has one of the most stylized art styles I've ever seen, and then the gameplay stays old school with that turn-based combat, and it feels so good. I've always liked turn-based combat myself, and I'm kind of sad we don't see more games like this anymore. Now, the one criticism that I do have with Persona 5 is that it feels a little bit bloated being over 100 hours long. Yeah, this is a very long game, but the story and its social aspects are interesting enough to have you play the full 100 hours, so don't be too threatened by that. Overwatch has been a breakout hit this generation for its brilliant competitive multiplayer. It basically took what made MOBAs popular and brought it to first-person shooters, and it was a perfect pairing thanks to Blizzard's creativity with their heroes. Each hero feels unique in Overwatch, and everybody has to play a role, whether that be a tank to hold the line, a DPS to deal damage, or a support to keep the team alive. Every role is important, and it is absolutely essential to play as a team in Overwatch. Unfortunately, even though Overwatch is a great game, that doesn't necessarily mean the community will work together. But if you can look beyond that, Overwatch is a fantastic competitive multiplayer game. From Software has made difficult games rather popular in recent years with the Dark Souls franchise, and this continues with Sekiro. In fact, I would even say that Sekiro is even more difficult than Dark Souls, but thanks to its precise and parry-based combat, it never feels like the game is just beating you with cheap tactics. I mean, yeah, when you die it can be frustrating, but you learn to get better, and this is why it's so rewarding when you finally beat that enemy that just keeps besting you. Actually, the bosses are some of the best I've seen in any game, so if you enjoy difficult games with good combat, then Sekiro is definitely the game for you. Anytime I think of the PlayStation brand, Uncharted is always the game that I think of first. The original trilogy on the PlayStation 3 are among my favorite games, and thankfully Uncharted 4 was just as good, if not better, than the PlayStation 3 games. The characters in these games are just so well done, with great personalities, and you really get attached to them and how their lives play out. Of course, though, you are a treasure hunter, so there's always that fun and alluring adventure as well with shooting, puzzles, car chases, and everything else you can think of. Uncharted helped push games towards this cinematic route, and still to this day, there is not many games that can do it better. Final Fantasy VII has finally returned. Fans have wanted a remake for years, and while we have only got part one so far, I think this can easily stand tall as a standalone game. 
They have expanded the characters and story significantly enough that I never felt like this was just a small portion of the original. If anything, I'm more absorbed into the world and its characters than ever before. With that said, I can't wait for part two. From Software not only has one game on this list, but two, Bloodborne. Bloodborne plays very similar to Dark Souls with a few twists here and there. It is a faster paced game, but while different, it once again has a very meticulous combat style and that same brutal difficulty. You can't just rush into battle, and you do need to carefully think of how to approach each enemy. And I think by this point we can just say it, From Software truly does have the best boss encounters in the industry. This game is actually so good, I think we need a sequel. Come on Sony, make it happen. Red Dead Redemption 2 is insane. Rockstar of course is known for being masters of big open world games, but Red Dead Redemption 2 took things to a whole new level. The attention to detail in this game is like no other. The only game that I can compare it to is The Last of Us Part 2. Both of these games have amazing animations that make them feel very lifelike. And there is so much to do in Red Dead Redemption 2. You can hunt, fish, or just explore the beautiful world that it has. Then there is the story which is phenomenal, and I think that's really what surprised me. This is a big open world game without any of the sacrifices that you see from other games similar to this. As I said, Red Dead Redemption 2 is insane. I would consider God of War the perfect single player experience. What I mean by this is that it does everything so well. The story is among the best in games right now, which kind of surprised me because I was not really a big fan of the original trilogy, and basically Kratos just always being angry and killing gods. Somehow though they made Kratos more likable this time, and then you have the combat, which again is among the best in any video game. Even the pacing to God of War is very well done with a semi-open world where it doesn't feel too cluttered or so open that it's boring to explore. Even the side missions are really fun in this game, so if you like single player games, God of War truly is amazing. And the number one spot goes to none other than The Witcher 3. I believe that The Witcher 3 is not just one of the best games of this entire generation, but I think it can also be considered one of the best RPGs ever made. The story is incredible with engaging characters, the world is fun to explore, the combat is unique and interesting. You have meaningful choices to make that will impact the world around you, and even its side missions are interesting. I don't usually like side missions, but some in this game are more interesting than main quests in other games. That's how good The Witcher 3 is, and if you haven't played it yet, go do yourself a favor and check out The Witcher 3. Anyways though, that's it for this list, but if I forgot to mention any game that you like, let me know in the comments below. With that said, if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you would like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.